Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan uh, salam sejahtera uh, kita sambung lagi pada bahagian uh, kedua terakhir daripada perbincangan kita tentang tamadun Islam dan uh, kali ini kita akan membincangkan uh, bahagian yang uh, juga amat penting ya, berkaitan dengan sumbangan Islam ya, sumbangan tamadun Islam terhadap peradaban dunia ini Um, apa yang ingin saya kongsikan ini mungkin agak ringkas ya, dan juga uh, mungkin uh, kita boleh uh, uh, teroka lebih lanjut lagi uh, berkaitan dengan apa ini dan uh, <coughs> uh, saya yakin kita semua telah pun uh, melihat ya, dan juga mungkin kita juga, juga telah pun uh, sedia mengalami ya, bagaimana uh, apa yang ada di hadapan kita ini adalah sebahagiannya hasil daripada sumbangan ilmu Islam ya, dalam pelbagai uh, aspek kehidupan ya. dan uh, dalam konteks sumbangan uh, tamadun Islam terhadap pada abad dunia ini uh, tamadun Islam ya, menyumbang dalam aspek keilmuan, politik, sosial, ekonomi, sains, teknologi, astronomi, matematik dan dalam pelbagai aspek yang lain yang begitu uh, luas ya dan kalau kita lihat ini ini lukisan yang uh, ada di di Vatican City ya di dalam uh, yang dilukis uh, oleh pelukis terkenal <coughs> Michael D'Angelo ya, yang uh, menunjukkan salah seorang daripada sarjana Islam ya Ibnu Sina ya, yang di di disenaraikan ya bersama dengan tokoh-tokoh uh, sejarah dunia yang lain ya yang wujud dalam sejarah ya. dan uh, kita lihat juga ya, uh, nanti saya akan kongsi ya, apa yang ada dalam video ini uh, apa yang telah di di diperkenalkan uh, oleh sebahagian uh, daripada sarjana ya, berkaitan sumbangan tamat Islam dan uh, kita boleh namakan ya, ramai di antara sarjana-sarjana Islam ya, yang menyumbang kepada uh, tamadun uh, Islam ini dan seharus seterusnya juga menyumbang kepada pembangunan tamadun-tamadun dunia lain ya, khususnya tamadun Barat ya, seperti Ibn Sina, Ibn Khaldun Al-Ghazali, ya, Al-Biruni ya, Al-Khawarizmi uh, dan uh, ini antara antara yang 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 di, di yang uh, yang begitu dikenali ya dan mungkin saya boleh berkongsi lagi apa yang disebut oleh video ini ya. mungkin uh, agak uh, saya mohon maaf ya, kualiti video yang uh, kurang baik dan mungkin juga uh, subtitle yang juga ada beberapa kesan kesapan banyak pun saya rasa video ini uh, banyak uh, memberikan uh, uh, gambaran penting ya sumbangan uh, tamadun Islam ya khususnya uh, orang Islam ya terhadap tamadun dunia. <coughs> in their bathrooms and hygiene practices in the 10th century which is over 1100 years ago which could so easily compete with the products that you have today now in your bathroom in your house in the 10th century they even had a wudu machine which you don't have to this very day it was mobile it was brought before a guest the guest would tap the head it looked like a peacock on a tray the guest would tap the head and water would come out in eight short spurts enough to perform wudu compare that with a sink and tap of today in the 13th century 800 years ago the likes of al jazri had already made numerous plots of all shapes and sizes you believe that the first big ben is the one that's in london that's not the first big ben the first big ben was built by your forefathers in phase morocco maghrib starbucks the first coffee house in europe appeared in 1645 in venice your forefathers were drinking coffee hundreds of years before this as it had been discovered by a man called khalid as he grazed his his goats on the slopes of Ethiopia. Abu Hassan Ali ibn Nafi nicknamed Ziryab. He was the one that introduced the concept of a three-course meal. Before that, the Europeans didn't even know what a three-course meal was. Before the 10th century, your forefathers had already laid the foundation of trigonometry and algebra. When it came to agriculture, S.P. Scott states, that the Spanish Muslim agricultural system was the most complex, the most scientific, and the most perfect ever devised by the ingenuity of man. 1100 
hundred years ago, your forefathers were manufacturing paper. They were building dams, they were building windmills. Allahu Akbar, Abbas ibn Firnas had made a flying machine. It was the first machine capable of carrying a human being in the air. They were designing great buildings. Who can forget the earthquake defying minarets of Sinan in Turkey? It which did not even collapse even after an earthquake. Who can forget the New York of the 9th century, Qurtuba? Qurtuba was the New York of the 9th century. In the 9th century, Qurtuba had hundreds and thousands of houses, 200,000 houses. Houses had running water, schools were free, there were dozens of libraries, the streets were paved and lit. Garbage was collected on the backs of donkeys and taken to special dumps outside the city walls. There were sewers, there was drainage in place. My friends, London and Paris, the capitals of the world at this moment in time, did not have these facilities for over 700 years after this. Your forefathers were designing surgical instruments, constructing hospitals. One Muslim alone designed over 200 surgical instruments, syringes, scalpels. And I assure you, modern instruments haven't changed much from his original designs. They were operating, treating cataracts. In the UK, cataracts are the most common cause of blindness in people over the age of 50. In the UK alone in 2005, 300,000 operations were undertaken. Allahu Akbar! Who would think that this was all made possible as a result of the foundation of your forefather, Imam Mousseli? This is why Dr. Donald Campbell, 20th century historian of Arabian medicine, he says, the European medical system is Arabian not only in origin but also in structure. He says that the Arabs are the intellectual forebears of the Europeans. And who can deny this? The Qanun of Ibn Sina dominated the Western world for over 600 years. This was just one of his works. He composed over 276 works. Who can forget the work of Ar-Razi? His book was the most highly respected and most frequently used medical textbook in the Western world for hundreds and hundreds of years. Who can forget Jabir ibn Hajjan? Unanimously agreed he was the founder of chemistry. My young friends, it was your forefather who devised and then perfected sublimation, amalgamation, crystallization, oxidation, evaporation, and you can keep on naming them one by one. Who can forget Al-Kindi? an all-round master. The names will keep on coming to mind. The excellence will keep on coming to mind. The virtues will keep on coming to mind. The contributions will keep on coming to mind. The achievement of your forefathers will keep on coming to mind. Indeed, these were the ummatis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They elevated the name of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherever they went in the globe. Whether they were traveling in some desert or in the thickness of some jungle, all of a sudden, people now, when they saw these people, or because of what they were and because of what they had achieved, my friends, all of a sudden, people now were interest, interested in Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A fire burned in their hearts which did not let them rest till they excelled, till they became world leaders, till they became the torch bearers, the beacons, the lighthouses and the pioneers. Uh, itulah ya, sebahagian daripada apa yang uh, disebutkan ya, oleh uh, penceramah tadi ya, berkaitan dengan uh, pencapaian dan juga sumbangan Uh, ilmuan Islam ya eh, dalam konteks uh, pembangunan tamadun eh, dan juga uh, sumbangannya terhadap perkembangan tamadun-tamadun yang lain. Jadi insya-Allah kita akan uh, kongsi lagi sebahagian ya eh, dalam uh, part uh, ataupun bahagian yang terakhir eh, dalam uh, perbincangan ini insya-Allah uh, saya ucapkan terima kasih di atas kesudian untuk uh, bersama dengan saya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.